Hi, Connor. Hi, Susan. Robinson, how are you? Doing well, doing well. You're a Penn State graduate now. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yep. <laughs> okay, I'm going to mute everybody now. <laughs> Except for you, Connor. Good morning, everybody. Where else would you rather be than a Zoom full of Penn Staters? I'm Paul Clifford, CEO of the Penn State Alumni Association. Welcome to the Penn State Alumni Association's Coffee Hour, where each week uh, you will, can hear uh, the voices of Penn Staters talking about what they're passionate about, you can expect to feel the pride and the, the power of the Penn State Network. We are recording this session and we'll be editing it and sharing it with other Penn Staters and hope that they are inspired by the stories that we tell on Coffee Hour. And today I'm joined by Connor Pardo. Connor is a 20, uh, 2020, 2021 young alumni ambassador. That doesn't even begin to explain everything that he is involved in. And so we are gonna dive into that. Connor, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Paul. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's nice to see you all over Zoom. Uh, hope everybody's doing well during these interesting times, but um, really appreciate the opportunity to come on here and kind of have a few moments to talk about kind of the, the beautiful story that Penn State has, has given me and um, to celebrate those moments with all of you. Absolutely. Well, let's dive right into it. And let's start with kind of your most recent title that you have acquired and that's of a Young Alumni Ambassador. So talk about what the program, the Young Alumni Ambassador program is all about and uh, how you got involved with it. Yeah, so at the core of it, kind of something that I've been looking to do as I you know, enter this new phase of, of life and this new phase of um, being a young professional was to remain connected to Penn State in a way that is a little bit more than just joining you know, the local chapter, joining the um, you know, the, the alumni association. So basically what it comes down to is when you're looking at, you know, the, long, the young alumni population, how can we get those that have recently graduated involved? Um, as a Lion ambassador throughout my time at Penn State, uh, one, of the main, uh, one of the main initiatives and things that we do is we get students involved with Penn State. We're the ones selling them on coming to Penn State. So as I was looking at a program to kind of keep in touch with Penn State and use those same skills and continue the ambassadorship, I thought that you know joining the Young Alumni Ambassador Program where you're, where you're really trying to gauge new Penn Staters into reminiscing upon their favorite memories as students um, while keeping them in touch with alumni through different career services, um, different, different professional development opportunities, all of those types of things. Um, I believe that this program does a really nice job of setting people up for success and building them up through the Alumni Association. And we can help them recognize the beauty that the Alumni, so the alumni Association has in helping them get to where they need to be, whether that's connecting with other Penn State alumni that are older, finding mentors, or whether it's just connecting with other young alumni and engaging in conversations, meeting up with people in the towns that they're at, building uh, relationships as they begin their their professional career. So um, the program itself, I think, has a lot of really great aspects to it and a lot of flexibility in the way that we choose to engage with young alumni. Um, but I'm looking forward to meeting, um, you know, young alumni, fellow members of the class of 2020 that I haven't met yet, um, and bringing them into the association, hoping that they can see the true value and being a part of the largest alumni uh, association in the world. Well, Connor, you mentioned being a Lion Ambassador. Talk about your previous involvement with the Penn State Alumni Association. Yeah, so during my sophomore spring semester, I got involved with Lion Ambassadors, um, and I truly think that that is where I found my home on campus. Um, I refer to my home at Penn State in the hints, um, and I think a lot of people definitely on this call have, have recognized that. I've seen, you know, I see Mara, Matt, Blake, Kristen, all of the great, all of the great faces that I would see in the hints every day um, on this call. But truly what it means, kind of like what that experience was for me, it was a way for me to give back to Penn State, a university that has given me so much. Um, 
and doing it in different ways, whether it was giving tours to prospective students, whether it was going to different events, you know, alumni, donor events, and helping individuals um, or different entities across campus with their missions and initiatives, or whether it was just professionally developing as, a, as an individual. I think that the Alumni Association definitely put in a lot of time and a lot of effort into the Lion Ambassador Program and has definitely helped us recognize that we have a place at Penn State and that place is important. Um, but truly kind of how that relationship with Lion Ambassadors has evolved over time. I've sat on the executive board for two years. Um, the first year, during my junior year, I was the tour director in which I oversaw all touring initiatives within the organization um, from admissions based tours for prospective students and accepted students to private tours where we were giving really exciting tours for distinguished alumni special guests to the university. Um, and coordinating all of those different things was a part of that job and then most recently as a senior I fulfilled the role of administrative vice president. Um, which truly has been probably my pinnacle of my Penn State time is being in this role. Um, it's definitely helped shape me into the person that I've become. Um, but a lot of the different duties of being the administrative vice president goes to building others up. And I think that that's really what I've learned a lot, um, learned most by being a part of Lion Ambassadors is that, you know, as a student leader, but as just somebody generally speaking, we have this duty to help others get to where they, they want to be. And as the administrative vice president, I think that's what the, what the true role is in looking at continuing education initiatives, educating the 58 new members, um, which truly I think are the pride and joy of my Penn State experience. Um, you know, bringing them to the org, helping them find their home in the hints too, um, has been the most immaculate experience that I, I could have ever asked for at Penn State. So being a Lion Ambassador has meant the world to me. Um, we had a final senior send off a few weeks ago and it was definitely an emotional, um, definitely an emotional event, but one that I think all of us Lion Ambassadors felt a lot of pride in knowing that we're graduating, um, being a part of what I like to refer as the best student organization at Penn State. This is the Penn State Alumni Association Coffee Hour. I'm Paul Clifford and I'm joined this morning by Connor Pardo. So Connor, let's start at the beginning of your Penn State story. How did you become a Penn Stater? Yeah, so it's actually it's actually quite interesting. Um, it took some twists and turns, but we got there. I actually started school um, at a non Penn State affiliated um, university. I went to George Washington University for one semester after graduating from Williamsport High School. Um, you know, and I went there, and I, I recognized that this wasn't what I was looking. For um, I didn't feel the pride on campus. I didn't feel kind of like the home that I was looking for. Um, and you know, Penn State was always on the radar. I applied, got in, but in the, in in the first try, the first swing of the bat, um, definitely didn't didn't make the decision that uh, was best for me. So um, after my first semester at George Washington, I I made a I would like to consider the best decision of my life and transferred to Penn State. Um, and since then, uh, I've recognized that a lot of the the reasons why I wasn't considering Penn State were invalid. Um, you know, I wanted to be in a city, I wanted to be close to internships, I wanted to be close to government at the time, and I wanted to be kind of like at the realm of, at the, at the head of the ship of where everything was happening in the country. But um, recognizing that I could do that at Penn State um, and recognizing that I could be a part of this really prideful community that that is so excited and, and ready to go out and make a difference in their communities, make a difference in the country and truly in the world and be a part of a, a network that expands far beyond any other university um, is something that truly spoke to me. Um, but it's really about the pride. It's really about just knowing that when I walk down the street and I see somebody else in a Penn State sweatshirt, regardless of if I yell a we are or not, I know that I'm a part of a family that is you know, over 700,000 members strong. And I think that that just speaks volumes to what the university can do for somebody. But, but like I said, it's a family. And I think that is why I, I'm so proud and so happy that I made that decision to come to Penn State because I, I wouldn't have wanted to be anywhere else the past few years. You know, speaking, speaking of family, it's not just your extended Penn State family, but family's uh, part of the Pardo, um, uh, Sorry, Penn State is part of the Pardo family now too. Talk about um, all of your family connections uh, to the institution. Yeah, so um, I, out of my immediate family, I was the first to come to Penn State. 
Um, but since then, I have a younger brother, actually, who is going into his junior year, finished up his sophomore year. He actually joined Lion Ambassadors um, this past year as well. So uh, I think that hopefully I, could, I hopefully started a trend um, with my family. I think it'd be really great to see the entire Pardo clan for the rest of the rest of eternity come to Penn State. But um, it's definitely it's definitely a great feeling also knowing I think it, it's awesome to see my parents come back and celebrate with me. I know during homecoming week, I was really fortunate enough to have the opportunity to be on the homecoming court this past year and seeing my parents interact with the different things that were happening on Penn State's campus and seeing them, you know, the pride in their eyes of just having a student or two students that go to Penn State University and the awesome opportunities that they're having. Um, th th those types of those types of things are just incredible. Um, and I think that they're really excited to see, hopefully even my younger, my youngest sister um, end up at Penn State one day as well. <laughs> yeah, all right, so let, let's, let's keep track now. Young alumni ambassador, uh, administrative uh, vice president for Lion Ambassadors, homecoming court, member of the class of 2020. So in addition to all of those uh, roles that you have held, um, you were also president of Penn State Student Performing Arts Council. So talk a little bit about the council and why that was important to you during your time at Penn State. Yeah, so something that was, that's always been really important to me is just the arts and the arts community. Um, when I was in high school, I was very, very uh, busy within the arts. I was performing, um, singing uh, within in musicals. I was in the band, different things like that. And I always saw a value in being involved with the arts, not just from a point of I'm doing something that I'm passionate about, but I felt like I truly benefited from being a part of the arts community intellectually, um, just culturally. I felt like I was a part of something bigger than myself. And I also find that at Penn State, and I think it's all weirdly connected here. But um, when I came to Penn State, I was involved with the Penn State uh, Penn Harmonics, which is an acapella group on campus. And as a Penn Harmonic, I met a really great mentor and friend, an older member um, of the class of 2019. And, you know, she got me involved with PAC and helped me recognize that what we can do is we can serve as advocates for student arts organizations on campus, whether they need places to perform, whether they need more funding, or whether they just need somebody to go to to ask for advice. And as I got involved with the Performing Arts Council, I recognized that this was a great opportunity to um, advocate for others on behalf of something that you're passionate about that you may not necessarily be pursuing a career in. So I've always been passionate about the arts. I knew that I probably wouldn't have a career in the arts, but it's something that I could see myself being involved with for time from, t you know, as time moves on throughout my life. Um, but what the mission of PAC really does is it's gathering the arts to increase arts awareness on campus, but also advocating for those arts entities on campus that may not be, ad may not be able to advocate for themselves. So as a you know, student affiliate organization, we kind of have the ability to have those crucial conversations with university administrators and different people on campus to make sure that these organizations are getting the representation that they need in securing funding, um, securing rights to perform a show, securing space to have their shows, different things like that. So it's been something that has been a really great journey for me. Um, I've met so many wonderful performers, gotten to see so many wonderful performances, and have been able to root on kind of like one of these strategic things that Penn State has. You know, one of the main things that I always kind of rep talk about when I'm talking to individuals about the arts community at Penn State is that President Barron has often said um, that he would like every single Penn State student to leave, uh, you know, Penn, the Penn State University uh, with at least one meaningful arts experience. And I think PAC has the ability to help students have that one meaningful arts experience, whether it's going to see a show, taking a certain general education class that's involved with the arts. There's a lot of different opportunities and we can help facilitate that and advocate for that uh, at the university administration level. So Connor, not only have you been in several leadership positions and have been very involved during your time as a, as a student at Penn State, um, you've also been recognized for that. You mentioned Homecoming Court, which is a, a peer recognition, right? They, they choose the, the students that they admire to be um, uh, on that with, with uh, that recognition. But you're also the recipient of the Roger Williams Student Leadership Award. Talk about what those recognitions mean to you. Yeah, so I honestly, they were both huge surprises. Um, 
if it wasn't for, I would say the mentors that I've gained in my time at Penn State, um, neither of those would have been possible. Um, but like I said, they were surprises. Um, the way that I kind of stumbled upon the, the Roger Williams uh, Student Leadership Award was actually, it was very interesting. I had no idea what was really going on, um, but my acapella group was performing at, um, it was the closing, it was like the dinner for the uh, Alumni Council, kind of like the award ceremony at the end of the term. And I was sitting um, with my advisors at the time, Ashley Martin and Kristen Garrity, um, and we, I, I, was, I was weird. I was at like one of the front tables. I didn't understand why I was there. Um, I was like, I was just here to sing. I don't get it. But um, lo and behold, there was off, obviously some ulterior motives there to get me to stay at the dinner. And um, it was one of those moments where you kind of, I always like to, like to think is like, you don't do anything to be recognized. Um, you know, there was no, there's never a point in time where I thought, I'm going to do this because I want to get an award or I want to do this because I want to be recognized or I want to do this because of, of all those other reasons. You know, you do the things that you do because you truly have a deep passion and care for them. And I can tell you right now that at Penn State, I, I did everything because I did have a passion for what I was doing. Um, my, I, I always know how big of an influence being, um, you know, being a, having inspirations above me and seeing how they helped me become the person I've become. I've always just tried to live my life with kindness, compassion, but also just a true um, goal and being a goal-oriented person for other people to achieve what they want to achieve. Um, and if I could help them get there, that was, that was it for me. That's what I wanted to do. So um, while these, these recognitions, specifically the, the Roger Williams Award and Homecoming, um, they're true surprises. And what they were is they were just kind of motivators for me to continue to do what I was doing. Um, if anything, I kind of looked at it and was like, all right, well, I have to do more. I have to figure out how I can do more to support those around me and, and encourage others around me and motivate people to be the best version of what they can be here at Penn State to change lives, but to really just change the scope of what they're able to do in their time um, as students. And I think that that is what those awards did for me. Um, like I said, true surprises, but um, very thankful for them and very thankful for the people that got me there. Um, it, I always say it takes a village to raise someone. And I, I have a really, really strong village of family, friends, mentors, advisors, um, and I couldn't be anywhere that I've gotten without them. This is the Penn State Alumni Association's Coffee Hour, and I'm joined today by Connor Pardo, a 2020-2021 Young Alumni Ambassador. Uh, Connor, so let's, uh, let's take a step back and, and talk about, so what I've been most struck by is in the face of kind of a really disappointing ending uh, to a, your time at Penn State, the positivity uh, and, and the looking for the, the silver lining that, that many of your classmates have, have had, right? So, um, you know, talk about where you were when you learned that your semester was going to first be interrupted and then um, be moved remotely and kind of what your emotions were and uh, and how you dealt with that to, to kind of finish strong. Yeah, so when I first learned of the three week um, hiatus that we were going to be taking uh, to virtual learning, um, I was actually on a beach in Mexico with two of my <laughs> two of my best friends uh, from Penn State. Uh, we were, you know, on spring break, expecting to be back in, in Happy Valley within, you know, in a few days. And, you know, we did see this rumor that Ohio State was going remote. And we were like, oh, Penn State's better than that. They'll never do what Ohio State does. But um, lo and behold, for public health reasons, I think we all had to make that, that really tough decision. But at first, it was kind of just like, a, all right, we can do three weeks. Like, we'll figure it out it'll all be fine. Um, but then a few days later, when I when I came back, I had this inclination that, uh, you know, things could get worse. And uh, I'll be starting a job in June in Pittsburgh. And I was looking for an apartment. And when I got back, I told my parents, I have, I have this feeling that we just need to go and find an apartment right now before things start to get a little bit crazy. Um, so I was actually in a car with my parents, um, right when Penn State called it for the rest of rest of the year to go to remote learning. And I remember just this feeling of like, of this, you know, 
like this definitely disappointing. I was definitely disappointed, but at the same time, I think I recognized why. Um, and I and I saw that this was an opportunity for for I think the class of 2020, but for us as a university to show that we're stronger than this, that we can overcome things like this. Um, and if anything, I think this semester is one for the history books. I think that the class of 2020 and um, just students involved with Penn State right now have used their resilience and have used their motivation and encouragement from advisors, professors to overcome a challenge. And I think the way that I'm viewing it now is what we can do is we need to do what we need to do now. So in the future, we can have the special things that we all value as you know, alumni now or as you know, as students will be valuing, whether that's football or just being able to go get a coffee with a friend on campus. And that's really what it came down to for me is like, you know, it, it was definitely disappointing um, not having gra a graduation ceremony. But what was truly probably like the hardest part is recognizing that, you know, it won't be the easy thing where I'm able to get up, you know, in the morning and go get a coffee with a friend and just talk for a few hours or, you know, I'm not able to walk to my class with my friend and have a chat about whatever's going on. Or, I mean, many of you that work in the hints, you know, I'm not able to go sit in the hints all day and do my homework and bother Kristen and bother Matt and bother Mara <laughs> as I would always do. So, um, you know, those are the those are the different things that I think hit home for me. But I I, I do recognize that one day we'll have those things, and when we do, it's going to be a huge celebration for everybody. And I'm looking forward to it. You have been a familiar face around the hints. And so I, I don't think any of the people you just mentioned would describe uh, your appearance in their doorway as a bother. Um, you're an advertising PR uh, and the communications arts and sciences major. So where are you going after you graduate? So I will be uh, entering the workforce with Highmark Health. I had an internship with Highmark last summer in Pittsburgh in their HR um, sector of the enterprise. And um, I applied then during my internship to the Leadership Acceleration Program, which is a two-year, uh, six-month rotational program through four different sectors of the enterprise. Um, so I'll be starting that in June. Looking forward to it. I think it's a really great opportunity to learn about different fields. Um, so I'm excited to have different experiences, experiences they, that I really don't know much about. Um, the beauty of the program is it kind of pushes you out of your comfort zone. Um, so, you know, as an advertising PR communications student, I've had a lot of time in, you know, in different PR entities, working with corporate communications, um, media relations, different things like that. But this program vows to push you out of that comfort zone. So maybe into finance or um, underwriting or even actuary as somebody who may not have those experiences. Um, they provide the knowledge and the education and learning tools for you to get that experience under your belt and that knowledge under your belt to bring you out as a really well-rounded candidate for not only internal work at Highmark, but whatever your next step may be, whether that's graduate school, business school, law school. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting started and, and definitely moving to Pittsburgh. It's a really exciting, a really exciting area with a lot of great opportunity and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited you're going to Pittsburgh, too. It's a Penn State city. Don't let anyone else tell you anything different. Uh, but we dominate that city. We dominate Philly. We dominate the state. And so you'll definitely feel the power of the Penn State network when you are in Pittsburgh. All right, let's 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 have a little bit of fun. I know you've seen some of these um, coffee hours before. So we're going to do what we call the lightning round here, OK? So I'm just going to throw out a couple of options, and you tell me kind of the first thing that pops to mind, OK? All right, so Sheets or Wawa? Wawa. Okay. Favorite, Probably not uh, the right answer for Pittsburgh, but. <laughs> so, or, or Williamsport for that right. matter. Right. Uh, your favorite spot on campus? Uh, the Hints. TikTok or Snapchat? <laughs> Snapchat. Um, I think that we already know the answer to this one, but your favorite building on campus? The Hints. Yeah. <laughs> How about your favorite pizza place in State College? Unpopular opinion, but Canyon. Canyon. Now, you know what? Canyon has popped up here on a number of occasions. Uh, I enjoy Canyon pizza uh, <laughs> as well. Margaritas happens to be my favorite. Um, mm. Yeah. And, and it's really just because of her. 
uh, and, and that she remembers you and remembers your order when you walk in there. But um, okay, Netflix or Hulu? Netflix. Your favorite place to eat on campus? West Dining Halls. Okay. Um, how about Starbucks or Dunkin'? You mentioned coffee. What, where's your go-to place? Starbucks. Uh, your favorite Penn State sport? Football. Okay. The library or the hub? The library. And your favorite creamery ice cream flavor? Ooh, peanut butter swirl. Peanut butter swirl. You know what? You are you are consistent. Uh, when I was doing some research, that was the same answer you gave on your line ambassador profile on the on the website. And so, um, you uh, you only get authentic answers here on Coffee Hour, uh, and we're excited to have Connor with us. All right, let's do some word association. Um, when I say the Nittany Lion, what's the first thing that pops to mind? Pride. Lion ambassadors. Excellence. Uh, for the glory. Always. Class of 2020. Resilient. And finally, we are. Penn State. <laughs> Connor, I appreciate you joining me this morning. Uh, it seems like we have uh, many people in your fan club with us uh, on the call today. And so I'm going to open it up and... Uh, and ask people if they have any questions for you. Um, I'm noticing that I have just updated my, my Zoom and, um, and that has taken away my chat feature, which is usually where I ask people to um, indicate that they'd like to ask a question. So if you would like to ask a question and you see the reactions tab down in the bottom, if you could just put a thumbs up and, uh, and I'll call on you to make sure that we're not running all over each other. But if you have a question for Connor, now just put a put a thumbs up in the reaction um and, and i see susan robinson looking at her phone susan would you like to ask a question he just called me out man yeah i have well, a question I've... i do have a question my Go question ahead. honor is what is your favorite penn state memory of yeah. to date there'll be many many more to come but what's <laughs> your favorite one so far well, it's definitely encouraging to hear that there's going to be many, many more. I think that's a big, you know, as, as a young alumni and going into this whole alumni ship hood thing, whatever it may be, <laughs> um, <laughs> definitely looking to continue to make those memories. But I would say that my, my best Penn State memory was, was actually this past semester. Um, we as Lion Ambassadors go on a, on a, a retreat in the spring semester. And it's a really great time for us all to kind of bond and, and just get to know each other better and, and celebrate the successes that we've had, but all of the continued um, success that we're going to hopefully have in the future. And there's a part of the night where we're actually all standing around a fire and just kind of like celebrating each other. And there's a moment where we sing the alma mater. And I can tell you that that was one of those memories that I'll never forget is just being able to be there with at this point, over 150 other Penn Staters, and, and I would like to consider some really good friends and, and encouragers and inspirations to me, um, singing the alma mater, something that's also so important to me. And I think that at that moment, you would look around and there are very few dry eyes um, for all of us. It was just one of those moments that I'll never forget. One of those moments I'm definitely very proud of. And as I become, an, as I'm moving, and I guess I am an alum, but as I continue to evolve as moving through this, uh, you know, moving through the Young Alumni Ambassador Program and, you know, as an alumni and a member of the Alumni Association, um, as I look back, I, I, I see a lot of really great potential with Lion Ambassadors and a lot of really great um, future leaders of not just Lion Ambassadors, but of Penn State of the Commonwealth, but of, of our country. And I think that Lion Ambassadors does a really great job of it. And I'm so excited to see where my, you know, the, uh, the next individual, the successor um, for me is gonna be what she's gonna be doing. Her name's Nina and she's, she's phenomenal. Um, so I'm excited to see her in her glory, um, doing all of the great work and encouraging her throughout her time because I know that um, as a Lion Ambassador, you're a family forever. You aren't, you aren't just here for four years. You aren't just in Lion Ambassadors for five semesters. You're a Lion Ambassador forever. And I think that memory and using it as a pivot point to continue to encourage those, um, to continue to do the great work that they do, 
uh, will be something that's very special to me for the rest of my life. Great. Any other questions for Connor? Shout out to Nina who is on the call as well. Hi, Connor. Thank you. I'm so excited to see everything that Connor does after graduation and he's left such an amazing legacy. So I don't have any questions, but I just wanted to say thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Connor, you've been such a wonderful guest on, on Coffee Hour. I'm, oh, here we go. We got more. So let's go to Kristen Garrity. Kristen Garrity, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Paul. Uh, similar to Nina, I do not have a question for Connor, but I want to just take a moment, uh, Connor, and congratulate you on your graduation and also extend my sincere gratitude for your leadership. Um, I think the entire SYA team and alumni association staff would agree with me that there are uh, very few leaders who stand out in the way that you did this year. So I just wanted to take a minute and say thank you for that. Thank you, Kristen. And I guess I'm gonna take a second too to just thank the SYA team and the Alumni Association for everything that they've done for me. Um, I know I mentioned this earlier, but it takes a village to definitely um, build somebody into who they've become. And I, I owe a lot of credit to um, the SYA team, um, the Alumni Association and all of the different people that I've come in contact in the hints, um, you know, randomly at tailgates um, that have definitely inspired me to be a better person and become the best Nittany Lion and Penn Stater that I can be far after my, my time on campus. So thank you to all of those individuals. Excellent. And we want to thank everyone for joining in the Penn State Alumni Association's Coffee Hour. Uh, we hope to see you next Wednesday where a guest is to be determined. We are efforting. We are trying to bring you um, the best of the best at Penn State. And so uh, we hope that you'll join us uh, next week for another edition of the Penn State Alumni Association's Coffee Hour. Until then, thanks for all you do for the university, for the glory, and for the future. We are Penn State. Penn State. Thank you.